Hi everyone, I hope everyone had a great lunch. Uh, my name is Josh Fialkoff, and I'm going to give a presentation on how to turn your WordPress website into a marketing automation engine. And uh, just as a little bit of shameless self-promotion, tell you a little bit about uh, me and my company. Um, I run a company called Forward Jump Marketing, and we do WordPress web development and online marketing. And uh, our latest site, uh, we just redesigned a uh, site for the Boston Teachers Union, btu.org. Um, and this is a good example of the kind of uh, stuff that we do. And uh, also in the interest of being transparent and of self-promotion at the same time, I just want to let you know that um, we have a financial relationship with a market automation company called Infusionsoft. Um, just, just so in, in the interest of full disclosure, and we sell and support their platform, but I'm not trying to sell you here. Um, but that said, um, so what is marketing automation? Um, yeah, or not. I'm not going to take this off. Don't do it. <laughs> marketing automation is a way to use education and content to get people to become prospects and then to become leads and uh, customers and then eventually to get people to become evangelists for your brand and to do the selling for you. And so we're going to talk about ways that, that you can do that. And so who needs marketing automation? Who should be at a session like this? I think small businesses, and really businesses of all sizes, but for this environment, I think small businesses, nonprofits, um, institutions who are generally nonprofits, and even freelancers can uh, take advantage of marketing automation. So here again, um, I'm going to tell you about marketing automation, but you can sign, sign up for this little demo, and you can see it, and we'll, I'll, we'll go back and forth, and I'll show you uh, what's happening throughout this presentation. So marketing automation works with a CRM, which is a customer relationship management system. And here's the technical definition, but really a CRM is a really big database that is collecting information about your customers and your prospects and people in your organization's uh, ecosystem. And it's helping you to understand what those customers are about, what do they want, uh, what are they looking for you to provide, and where in the sales cycle or in the relationship process are they with you? So WordPress is a great tool, as we all know, to attract prospects. It's really good at letting you write great content, at letting you use that content to collect leads. You can put forms on your website. You can let people Facebook and tweet about what you're doing. So it's a really good way to get people into your sales funnel or whatever it is. If you're a nonprofit, it's not a sales funnel, but it still is a marketing funnel. Um, and marketing automation is a way to, to make WordPress even better at getting those leads in and keeping them in and turning them into customers. So one example of this is, I just, I'm showing you what we're doing, is marketing aut automation systems oftentimes have their own forms, but because we're all using WordPress, we can do really awesome forms. So we use Gravity Forms. And with Gravity Forms, you can do really uh, cool things, like you can make conditional fields, so that if someone selects other in a drop-down, then it, it shows up a content, a, a box that says, what is the other information that you want to tell us? And a lot of times, these CRMs and marketing automation systems aren't very good don't have as advanced <laughs> form. So, so through using WordPress, we can make this whole process much better. And so what we're going to do once we've got our a CRM set up is we're going to have to connect WordPress into this, this CRM. And what I'm showing you here is a plugin that we use that maps the fields. So when someone... Um, so it answers the name first, that goes into the my first name field in the CRM system. And, um, and, then, and then we're using conditional tags so that, so that we can identify what, what they're about. So for instance here, I have, if you go to that, that page, you'll, you'll see that you'll fill the form, and what you won't see is WordCamp 2017 form submission. But on the back end, I'll know that everybody who signed up on that page was from the WordPress WordCamp 2017, and that way I can market to those people with their permission in a, in a very refined and nuanced way.
because I know that they're interested in WordCamp, and I know uh, what, what they're about, more of what they're about. And so you can see this is an example of, of a test entry that I did um, that'll show you um, what information we know about people. Is that, Tim, is that big enough? I'll, uh, so I'll explain it. So what this is, is this is a contact record within the CRM. And what I've done is, is what I'm showing you here are the tags that we've applied to, to this person, Mary WordPress. And the tags tell us what Mary WordPress is interested in. So we know that Mary WordPress was at WordCamp 2017 and that she filled out a contact. <coughs> and we know that Mary WordPress is interested in marketing automation, online advertising, and WordPress services because those were things that she checked off on the contact form. So that down the line, when we're talking to her in the future, we're going to make sure that we talk to her about those particular interest because we know that that's what she's looking for. And this, this means that you can send very customized micro messages to very small groups of people rather than sending one massive email to everybody that's very generalized and might not be of interest to, to, to all those people. As I said. So here's the campaign that you're in right now. So if you, how many people have have filled out the have filled out the form or, or texted it. So okay, so so right now you're getting you you've already gotten the the uh, text message response or the email response depending on on how you did it, and so you are going through this campaign, and um, and based on the tag, we're following up with specific uh, information that's customized based on on how you respond, and then we're going to take you through this campaign, and, um, and depending on, on what, whether you open it, whether you click on something, and what you do, that's going to determine where you go. So it's essentially a, a choose your own adventure. Yes? Oh, actually, can you hold on and wait for the mic? I'm sorry, I was supposed to say that. Uh, can you um, put that phone number back up? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So, um, as I said, we're, we're aligned with a specific uh, CRM company, but we've, I spent, we spent a lot of time searching for vendors, and it's a really crowded marketplace, and what we found was most of the reviews on the, on, on, that we found online were paid advertisements that were masquerading as reviews, so you really can't trust a lot of what you read online about these different vendors, which is very, very unfortunate. At the end of this um, uh, presentation, I have some links of, of actual legitimate reviews that are not paid for. Um, so marketing automation puts all of this information in one place. So we've got email marketing. So marketing automation is going to replace uh, Constant Contact or MailChimp or some system like that. Um, it's going to integrate with, with WordPress, and it's going to have a CRM functionality. And what we found was that there are a lot of these systems that say they're CRM light. And our experience was that anyone who says they're a CRM light is not a CRM at all. And many of the people that say they're a CRM are actually a CRM light. Um, and having a good CRM is, is super important in this process because that's what's going to store all of your information. And so you want to make sure that uh, that information, that's collecting the right information, that's putting it in the right place, and that's allowing you to do the things that you want to do to that information. And so when we were looking for a vendor, we wanted to make sure that uh, we wouldn't outgrow the functionality too soon, um, and that it would grow with us. Um, and so that's, that was one of the important things that we looked at. The other thing was that if we did want to leave the vendor, that we could take our data with us. There are no real standards for CRMs in terms of how, how they uh, uh, store data. 
So different vendors store data in different places. And I'll just give an example, and I don't mean to pick on them. Um, it's HubSpot. Uh, but we're using HubSpot's free CRM, which I think HubSpot's a great product, so I'm not at all trying to denigrate them. Um, and when we switched to, to another vendor, there was, we weren't able to take uh, one piece of data with us, which was when, we had, when the salespeople had last called or, or e emailed or done other sort of activity with specific prospects. And it was crazy that we couldn't take that data with us because that is like probably maybe one of the most important things is, what is when did you last contact this person and what, what happened when you contacted them? Um, and so that's an example of why knowing uh, what information you can import and export is, is so important. Um, and then usability. We found a lot of these systems hadn't been updated in a long time visually, and they were just graphically either, they looked like they were from the 90s, or it just wasn't clear where to go to do something. So making sure that, that you can understand how to do something, and if you're selling this to your customers, making sure that they'll be able to figure out how to do it. Um, because the system may be great, but if, if people can't figure out how to use it, it, it's of no value. And then finally, we want to make sure that, I think it's important to make sure that, that the company that you choose is stable and is going to be in the marketplace for a long time because you're really um, developing a close relationship with whatever CRM vendor you choose because it is so, so difficult to switch. Um, and you want to make sure that they're going to keep up with technology. So one of the things we looked at, for instance, was um, whether they work with Zapier or, or some other system so that if, if one of their components Fail to keep pace with technology, that we could use a different um, email marketing system or whatever whatever other system you wanted you would want to replace with it. So those are things that, that we found to be, be super important in our search. And and then of course uh, the other element was cost. Um, and we really liked HubSpot, um, but HubSpot was was too expensive for some of our clients. Um, and 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 these are ballpark prices. Um, all of these vendors are generally offering discounts, so uh, finding a discount is not hard, but um, it, it's, it, it changes the, 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 the market, the retail price. Um, and, and also pay attention to the setup cost, um, especially if, it, if it's the first time you're using a vendor. Um, I think you really want to either go with a partner or go with the company itself to make sure that they set it up for you correctly and they're following best practices. Um, and then checking how many how many contacts are you going to have, and, and uh, how often are you going to send them e send out emails, because that will that will uh, impact your price. Um, and I should mention that uh, Modic is, is the one at the bottom is a relatively new player. It's an open source system. It's modeled after WordPress, um, and it's a freemium model. Um, and um, I don't know a tremendous amount about it. I had I had I've had an intro call with Modic, and I've I've had one version set up on my computer, but I haven't, haven't used it extensively, but um, it, it seems like it has potential. It's something that, that I'm keeping an eye on, for sure. And, um, and, and then there are also CRMs, and, and this is another crowded field. There are CRMs that don't offer marketing automation. Um, and, and I actually just added this slide a couple days ago, because a, a friend of mine was looking for, for one, and he said, well, what about Streak? And I hadn't thought about Streak. Streak is a CRM that integrates with Gmail. And so you can essentially um, turn Gmail into a CRM. And so that, that has proven to be a very um, interesting idea. I, I tested it out several years ago, and, and it, was, it was a good product. I think it's really for someone who's a solopreneur um, that it, it might not, I don't know how well it would work for uh, a, a multi-person multi organization. Um, and, then there, and then a company called Free CRM, which again, I haven't used this one, um, but, but I've, I've seen some, some good information about it. Um, HubSpot has a free CRM uh, that, that, that we have used for the, in the past several years, which was very good. Um, it doesn't have marketing automation, and it's, it's, it's an entry of the product to get people to buy the full HubSpot system. And as I said, we, we had trouble exporting stuff from it, so that's definitely a downside to it. Um, and then Insightly uh, is a, a free CRM that, that integrates with, with uh, G Suite, with Google Apps. Um, and that has been uh, something that, that, that's been good. Um, yeah. um, and then I wanted to uh, give you some, some additional resources. As I said, uh, there are a lot of these 
reviews. If you if you Google, you know, CRM review, you're going to get pages and pages of content. And when you look on the links, hover over the links, and you'll see that they're um, affiliate links or that they're just outright advertisements for these CRMs. So it's it's just super important that you know where the information you're getting is, is coming from and, and whether or not it's, it's legitimate. Um, and that is, is the end, um, but I'd be happy to take questions if anyone has questions. And I'd love to get feedback on, from people if, they, if they've gone through the, the market automation sequence and if people have questions about that. Uh, Matt, where's Matt? Me. Oh, yes. do you have the mic? Mike is back in. there. Okay. There's a question over here? Yeah, I'm trying to get that. Okay, cool. <laughs> sorry. Thank you very much. How are you? Yeah. Whoa. So you, uh, you talked about email a lot, um, and obviously SMS as well. Um, I'm wondering um, what other channels um, you, you use, and if uh, digital display, like retargeting, is part of that, and if that ties into your CRM. Yes, that is a great question. Um, so, so the CRM, the, the marketing automation systems generally uh, work well with with online advertising and with social networking. Um, Facebook lead ads, for instance, which has proven to be one of the best uh, advertising lead generation tools, um, it, it integrates with it. Some of them require third-party integration, um, and and we found that with HubSpot and with Infusionsoft. So we actually, you know. The, I guess that's another thing I should mention about the sticker price is that um, a lot of times you, it's going to require a third-party integration and that you should factor that in to your total budget for this. So for instance, we're using a system called Plus This, which when you actually, when you text that number, that's actually going through Plus This and then going to Infusionsoft. And it's the same thing with Facebook lead ads. So we have a Facebook lead ads campaign and when you... Um, so when you sign up in that, in, not in that system, because I, I specifically said that I'm not going to market to you unless I have your permission, but in other, if you went to my web, if you went to forwardjump.com and, and filled out a contact form, you would be added to a plus this retargeting list, and that would uh, show you ads on Facebook. Is everyone familiar with retargeting ads? Should I explain that a little bit? Okay, so, so retargeting ads are ads that are based on cookies that when you go to a company site, like you'll see this if you shop for uh, apparel, like if you go to Land's End or, or L.A. Bean or something like that, um, and you put something into your shopping cart, say you put a, a t-shirt into your shopping cart, when you go to another site, you're gonna see that L.A. Bean that's gonna say, hey, don't forget to check out. Um, you, 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 are you still interested in this t-shirt? Um, and, and so that's called retargeting. And so retargeting is a really good way to um, turn people who are in your pipeline into customers. So people who have started a transaction or people who may have downloaded a PDF um, but haven't completed the transaction, you can, you can retarget them and, and remind them to come back to your site or you can tell them about something new and cool. So like I could put as a retargeting app for people to come to my site, hey, I'm going to be speaking at WordCamp on Saturday, so if you're in Boston, come and, and watch. Um, so yes, so the, the, the CRM and marketing automation systems do work with um, advertising and, and other channels besides email. Um, I had hoped that the social networking integration would be better, um, but there are limitations from Facebook. For instance, I had hoped that when people liked our page, that somehow they would be added to the marketing automation funnel, but that doesn't happen, and I think that's because of Facebook uh, privacy rules. I think that you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be targeted just because you like the page necessarily, so that's that's uh, that's just certainly a limitation, but other ways that are. Are there other questions? Yes, uh, sir. I was still a little bit unclear on how you could tell which review sites were um, bogus and which were genuine. Um, you were saying how they would have links, but I would think even a, a genuine review site would have links to the um, yes. vendors. Yes. Okay. So if you do CRM review, and then you go to the, the site, here we go. So this is from softwareadvice.com, never heard of them. Uh, okay, so see, 
here when you wait, you know, I don't want to waste too much spend too much time. It's not a waste. Um, when you when you go to these sites and you actually go to them, there's gonna be Um, there's going to be a, an affiliate link, so it's not going to be a link, this one is for Infusionsoft, and it's not going to be specifically to Infusionsoft, it's going to be to their, here we go. So you can see here that if you hover over this link, that the link is actually to software advice, and then there's an ampersand and a site code. So, so they're actually getting referral fee when you watch this demo. So it's, it's really tricky and you have to be you have to be on, on top of your game. You have to be, you know, much more, um, much more uh, vigilant about it than, than you really ought to be. It, it's really a shame that, that this is going on. And I think even the fact that they're showing this pop up to us is a sign that this is not a legitimate review site. Uh, does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hi. You mentioned um, uh, Infusionspot and HubSpot and some of these Infusionsoft. Um, so I work for University of Mass Boston. We we just hired like Salesforce. I, I know like hundreds and hundreds and some at a huge enterprise level that wouldn't even merit being mentioned in your yes. conversation. Yes. In fact, I had Salesforce on there uh, earlier. So Salesforce is a CRM, but it's not a marketing automation system. And this it gets really confusing. Salesforce works with a system called Pardot or Pardo. I'm pretty sure it's Pardot. Um, and, and you have to have both of those systems going. I didn't include that because I just felt like our audience probably wasn't at the enterprise level. Um, uh, but Salesforce and Pardot, I think together, it's, I think it's easily $5,000 a month. Okay. Um, so it's- I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, I'm sorry. I have a somewhat of a specific question. I sure. do some automation, but I've always been hesitant to fully pull the trigger on it because um, I worry a little bit about beating somebody over the head with a marketing message, uh, especially if they've already purchased. So we, uh, you know, we'll capture an email. I think that's a, one way that a lot of people um, you know, get a lead. And we will send some notifications or emails to the people that are interested in the product. Now, how do you um, is there a way, I guess, in Fusionsoft or whatever, how do you, uh, what other information do you tag so that when they purchase, they're not getting the messages? Now, if, you, if you're tagging the email, they may not purchase with that email. So my worry has always been if they're using a personal email just to check it out, but then they use their company email or company name or address or billing address or whatever to purchase, and then we're still sitting there sending them messages like telling them how great we are, and I go, okay, well, I already purchased, thanks. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, how do you mitigate that? Uh, you can mitigate it, you can't eliminate it. So mitigate was a really good word. So I, in my in my Facebook feed, I still get ads for Infusionsoft because it's on my Gmail account and I purchased it with my ForwardJump account. So even though I'm a, a partner of Infusionsoft, they're still targeting me that, hey, why don't you sign up? Um, and so I, I think that it's it's a big problem. I mean, it's the same, it's a similar sort of problem to the fact that, that when people start on their laptops and then go to their mobile phones, you know, how do you tell that it's the same user session? Um, so I don't think it's it's a problem that we haven't we haven't fully solved. But to your earlier point about purchasers, um, a lot of that goes into content. There's so much content that's involved in marketing automation. So we have uh, with one client we have at least two dozen uh, campaigns going on now, and each campaign could have a half dozen to a dozen emails. So that's a lot of content to write. Um, so making sure that you have all of that content written making sure that you have all that content copy edited. Um, I had a copy editor just go through some of the content and she found a bunch of errors and I've already been, I've had, I've been through it. Um, several of the people in my company have been through it and the fact that, that we still caught errors is a testament to how much there is. In fact, I'm advising a big nonprofit now who's getting into marketing automation and my advice was just go slow and test it on a small group and don't start at 100% because you're going to have errors, and you're going to mistarget people. So, for instance, um, if, if you tag or, or otherwise categorize people as purchasers, someone who's already already bought, then you can you can put them into a different category. Um, it's not in this campaign, but in some campaigns, I have uh, in, in Futuresoft they call it a decision diamond. Different different vendors will call it something else. Where you say if they have this tag, send them this way, and if they have this other tag, send them another way. 
And so we do that a lot of times. So we have one like that tells you about the background and capabilities of our company. So we don't send that out when existing customers fill out a form because they already know about our background and capabilities. So there's no sense in, in hammering that, that into them again. Um, but, but that is, is a relatively, uh, it's a more advanced thing and, and it takes a lot more um, uh, attention to detail and, and, and just being persistent about it. So that's great. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that helps. Thank you. Okay, great, great. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I'm curious. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Here you go. Oh. Hi. So uh, I'm curious to know uh, how does a marketing automation integrates with uh, uh, Zapier? Like, how can you make that connection, and how you can take advantage of it? Yep. Yep. So that's a great question. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Zapier is a really neat company that integrates APIs. So um, without doing any code, you can uh, send. Here, let me. Uh, you can send something from Infusionsoft into Google Sheets, or you can send something from uh, HubSpot into uh, some other, any other SaaS online online system. And the way that it works is you have to authenticate yourself and and enter some sort of API key, um, and then once you've done that sort of you know wonky stuff. Uh, then that should be something you only have to do once, and then from then on, you just match up fields. So we'll say um, first name equals first, and address equals address one, and then from then on, it will filter that data in, in uh, hopefully correctly. Um, and Zapier is a, a really great tool for this, and again, I'm not, I'm not paid by Zapier, I don't have any connection with them other than I'm a customer. Um, they, it, it's a really big tool because it, it, it expands uh, you know, the platform of what you can do exponentially. And as I mentioned earlier, it's also good that if, if you're using a system and, and you're not happy with one element of it, um, you should be able to swap that element out and choose constant contact instead of the email component or, or something else to, to that effect um, so that you can help your system stay current and, and do the, the newest thing that's happening in 2017. Other questions? Yes? Did I forget, Tim? No. So for those who decide they need a paid solution, yes. uh, how, how do they go about determining it's the, the system's worth, basically, what's the return on investment? Is it worth those hundreds of dollars a month, and how do you determine that? That's a great question. I think one of the advantages of a market automation system is that it does help you understand the true ROI of your marketing uh, efforts because it, it solves that last mile problem, which is that if you're running an AdWords campaign or a Facebook ads campaign and people click on, on an ad, do you, and especially if you're in a service business, if you're not selling an online product, do you know that they've actually bought and do you know how much they've actually spent? Um, and so we have a, a client that, that's a, a true case in point of that, that all they sell are services and, and, a, and a, a few products. And so we've been, you know, running Google AdWords campaigns for years for them, and not really understanding the true value of, of what they were getting. But now we can quantify that at a much uh, more granular level and say, this campaign generated these these leads, and these are the people, and this is what they bought from your company, or or this is where they are now, um, or even sometimes just saying, um, as with with one client, we just say, hey, here are the ten people that that are in your campaign now, and they go, oh yeah, that's, you know, however many thousands of, or hopefully more than thousands of dollars <laughs> of business, and then, and then you can very easily um, understand the ROI. Anybody else? Okay, well thank you very much, and feel free to uh, contact me uh, online if you have any questions in the future.